And everyone, David, he is our next speaker. And full attention to him. Think of a coffee that is so influential that it introduced coffee to the Europeans. Despite its worldwide fame, it is not a coffee type, it is not a coffee blend, it is not even a coffee of origin. What makes this... I'm talking about Turkish coffee. Before I start my presentation, I would like to just give you a brief detail you know, information about the country itself. Where is Turkey? Turkey is in the middle of Europe, Asia, Africa, and Middle East. It is that strategic location made itself home to 27 different civilizations throughout the history. It's also a heaven for archaeologists. This is one of the two most prominent examples that two of the seven wonders of the ancient world stood there. A little known fact, it is also the birthplace of Christianity. The list goes on forever that I could not fit in a two hour presentation. This map here shows the world and our locations in Turkey to see. You can see the Trojans of the Homer, birthplace of Santa Claus, and you can even see the remains of Noah's Ark on, the, on top of Mount Ararat in a clear summer day. History and culture is as rich as it can get in Turkey, which is also reflected in their coffee drinking culture. Turks love a favorite coffee goes back as far as five centuries. What makes this coffee so special is that it's ritual-like preparation and serving. During the time of the Ottoman Empire, it used to take 40 people to prepare a single cup of coffee for the Sultan. But it wasn't the royalty. Everyday people also enjoy coffee. Women got to get in their houses, and men meet in the coffee shops to talk about daily life, social issues, politics, and economics. Through these interactions, coffee became the lubricant of social gatherings. Better yet, it emerged as a symbol of friendship. It was so important in native culture that the prospective husband used to judge the woman's marriage by her coffee making skills, which prompted us to the second part of the presentation, how to make Turkish coffee. I call this the four pillars of Turkish coffee. This grinder here represents the coffee has to be in the finest form, almost like a baby powder. I bet you hundred dollars any supermarket you go to today, in their grinder setting, the last setting will read Turkish. This is the cooker called Jezre that we use, and the coffee usually serves in something similar to this. And time represents the social aspect of the coffee that is usually enjoyed after a good meal or in the company of friends. It's never drank alone, it's never served at the breakfast, and it's never to go either. The first step of the cooking is just basically gathering of the stuff that are mentioned. The second step is just adding the ingredient, ingredients and in the cooking process. An important note here that the sugar is added in the cooking process, so you have to specify how you like your coffee. The third and the most crucial step is the capturing of the frog. That's the pride of the coffee, so you have to be careful to capture this as you cook it. If you miss this, you have to do this all over again. The Turkish coffee is never served without its proper frog. And the last part is just the serving of it. It's usually served with a glass of water, a piece of Turkish light, or just by itself. Well then you know about its history and you know how to make one. I'm going to share a secret about the Turkish coffee. There isn't any drink quite like it in the world. Turkish coffee is the only drink that allows its drinkers to look 40 days into their future. This is how. Once you start tasting the coffee grounds, you start drinking it. You take your saucer and you place it on top of your cup. You make a wish, you give it a couple of stirs, and you turn it upside down and you let it cool. As it cools off, usually a self claimed member in the group will do the reading for everybody. It's not science or art, it's mainly the uh, interpretation of the signs and the symbols left behind the coffee grounds. It looks something like this. You serve your coffee, you finish it, turn it upside down, you let it cool. And it's a little dark, but if you can see there are some symbols and shapes. It looks like a little bird there, maybe. And that's it. That's Turkish coffee in a nutshell. Now that we are very well informed about this cultural phenomenon, there is only one thing left to do. Drink one. Given my expertise about the subject, I invite each and every one of you to my house to enjoy this world-famous treat. It might 
just reveal the next winning lottery numbers, or it might be our grades this semester. We'll just have to see. <laughs> Time for Raymond. Four minutes and fifty-eight seconds. Four fifty-eight.